So a lot has happened since Natasha Yubar was crowned Miss South Africa 2023. The good, the bad, the embarrassing, the cringeworthy. We're going to be covering it all in today's video. Starting off with something good, which I think a lot of you all know already, but Brioni Govender has been selected as our Miss Universe South Africa. Since Natasha Hubert, you guys know, has already represented South Africa at Miss Universe back in 2020, going unplaced. We do not know Miss Universe 2020 in South Africa, to be honest. We pretend she does not exist. But nonetheless, Natasha already went to Miss Universe and she cannot go again. And so for that reason, Brioni Govender, who was the first runner-up, for Miss South Africa 2023 has been selected to represent South Africa at Miss Universe 2023. There was a bit of a mix up on the Miss Universe social media. We know whoever runs Miss Universe's social media is a bit incompetent at the best of times. Okay, they make a lot of mistakes and they accidentally posted our girl Natasha as Miss Universe South Africa 2023. But that was just a mistake. That thing was up for like two seconds. You guys are very diligent, so one of you actually screenshot it and sent it to me, but it was just a mistake nonetheless. And then immediately afterwards, they posted Brioni as Miss Universe South Africa. So let me know what you guys think about that. As I've said before, I don't think Brioni is as ready as Natasha is. Um, there's There are a lot of things that she can still work on, but hopefully the Miss South Africa organization will help her to work on those things within the next... 12 weeks until we've got Miss Universe again. Now, as for Miss Supranational South Africa, Natasha, during this past week, it was her Miss South Africa Media Week, if you will, she did announce that she will not be going anywhere internationally during her year of reign. So, obviously, she announced to everybody that she would not be going to Miss Universe, which we already knew, but she also announced that she would not be representing South Africa at Miss Supranational, which is a bit suspicious because, as you guys know, my theory is that Miss Supranational's license contract is running out with Miss South Africa and they will probably not renew. Okay, are you going back to Miss Universe? I'm not. You're um, not? I'm not. I am yet to be Miss South Africa for the full year. I'm not going to Miss Supranational. Whether or not someone will still be representing South Africa at Miss Supranational 2023 remains to be seen. I don't know if it personally was Natasha's choice to not go to Miss Supranational because as she said in her many interviews, she just wants to be Miss South Africa. She is giving Brioni a chance to go to Miss Universe, which it's not her chance to give, but okay. Um, but she will not be going to Miss Supranational either, but there has been absolutely no word on who will be representing South Africa at Miss Supranational. Now, many people assume that it would be Brioni, you know, if she doesn't win Miss Universe, then perhaps she can go to Miss Supranational as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be so quick because, um, she, I don't think that will probably happen, depending on how far Brioni goes at Miss Universe. If she perhaps is in the top five, top 10, top 20 even, I don't see her being sent to Miss Supranational by the Miss South Africa organization, you know, in fear of offending Miss Universe. But then again, was it even Natasha's choice not to go to Miss Supranational? Because since Natasha is the winner of Miss South Africa, you know, obviously the Miss South Africa organization would have sent her to Miss Universe if they could, if they hadn't made that mistake back in 2020. But obviously, since she can't go to Miss Universe again because she already competed there, a lot of people assumed that Natasha would go to Miss Supranational. But then again, this would probably offend Miss Universe's owner's delicate feelings. So perhaps that is the reason why Natasha will not be representing South Africa anywhere internationally. Now, I think perhaps if anyone is going to Miss Supranational, Representing South Africa this year, it will be Nande Mabala, who placed third at Miss South Africa this year. But it does remain to be seen who will be representing South Africa at Miss Supranational, if anyone. Yeah, that is a whole other kettle of fish. Let's talk about Natasha's interviews, right? I am just in awe, in absolute shock of how 
uninformed these interviewers were. Like you are going to be interviewing someone, right? You would think that they would equip themselves with the basic pageant knowledge needed to interview a Miss South Africa. No, all of them were very surprised that Natasha could not in fact represent South Africa at Miss Universe. How are they surprised by this? You know, the, pa you, the basics of Miss Universe is a woman goes there, represents her country once and she can't go again. Have you ever seen the same woman at Miss Universe twice? I am just in awe, <sighs> in awe of how uninformed these interviewers were. Oh my goodness. Some of them, guys, you are not going to believe this, are even in shock that Natasha can't go to Miss World. Where have you been? Where have you, where have you been? Right? I just, oh, goodness. Now, getting into the real tea of the week, we have to talk about Zozi Binitunzi unfollowing the Miss South Africa CEO, Steph Veal, as well as Miss South Africa itself on Instagram. Now, apparently the tea is that you know, Zozi was the amazing host for Miss South Africa's reality show Crown Chasers this year. And obviously she looked amazing in every episode. This was not by mistake. Let me tell you, she had a whole stylist, which of course, as she should, she is Zozi Binitunzi and she has been hired by the Miss South Africa organization to be a host for Crown Chasers. And I absolutely loved seeing how amazing Zozi looked every single episode, right? You would hope that everybody would get duly paid. Now, the tea is that Zozi's stylist understood that they would get paid by the Miss South Africa organization, but they were told, allegedly, by the Miss South Africa organization to invoice Zozi Bini directly for her styling on Crown Chasers, which is the Miss South Africa organization's show. Now, I'm no expert, look at my setup, but I would assume that if I were to be hired by a company, and I would be expected to look my best every single episode that, um, you know, my styling fees would be paid by said company. Now, we don't even know if this is Zozi's personal stylist or if the Miss South Africa organization assigned a stylist to her. But either way, I would assume that the company in charge of the production would be footing the bill for production costs such as styling costs. You know what I mean? So I can understand why Zozi would be upset about a situation like this. This all begs the question, is the Miss South Africa organization running out of money? Because we know Miss, the Miss Universe license, okay, since Kun An took over, couldn't have been cheap. We know that woman is allegedly obsessed of money, right? So Miss South Africa probably paid an arm and a leg and in Miss Universe license fees. They got rid of their Miss World license. Is, a, is this all a sign that the Miss South Africa organization is starting to struggle financially a bit? Because let's be honest, it's been a while since South Africa did has done extremely well at either Miss Universe or Miss World, which has always been you know, the most popular pageants in South Africa and what has always drawn the most people to Miss South Africa. I mean, let's be honest, after 2017, 2018, 2019, the Miss South Africa organization was flying high. They were, you know, the revenue was skyrocketing. Obviously, then the pandemic hit. And since then, we haven't done particularly well, right? We haven't won any Miss Universe or Miss World title and now obviously Miss World is off the table for South Africa as well. We did win Miss Supranational but it, it isn't as popular in South Africa as Miss Universe for example. So I think Miss South Africa is really gunning for doing extremely well at Miss Universe because right now as of 2023 allegedly the seats at Miss South Africa this year were devastatingly empty, according to people who were actually 
there. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but the Miss South Africa organization actually put their VIP tickets for a certain block of seats at 50% off just before Miss South Africa 2023 took place. And allegedly, according to one of you guys actually sat there, you think this is just a theory. Okay, guys, this is just a theory. But they wanted to keep all of the seats close to the stage very full in order to make the arena look fuller on camera, which I do think is probably the case. That's why those um, seats, those tickets, in my opinion, went on sale 50% off right before the pageant. Now, a lot of you guys who bought VIP tickets were extremely disenchanted with the whole thing. Apparently, the lines for the red carpet were like three hours long. Just about anybody could get in there. And most terribly of all, there was not even an after party or anything for the VIP ticket holders. You know what it is? I think there are just too many VIP tickets on sale for Miss South Africa. Because I think, you know, if everybody is a VIP, nobody is a VIP. Do you catch my vibe? And then also, I think there shouldn't be those many, that many VIP tickets. And the people who actually bought those tickets should be able to at least meet the queens, have an after party where they could interact with you know, the queens and people from the organization, that would be nice. I mean, a lot of people who held VIP tickets actually didn't end up paying 750. They probably paid like 1,500 full price. So yeah, you guys need to let me know what you think about Miss South Africa and their whole ticket story, seats being empty, all of that. It's not, it's not giving you know iconic miss south africa as we know it because as we know this year even it wasn't as star studded as you know 2021 when we had pia we had the reigning miss universe we had catriona we had zozi there this year we didn't even have zozi there because <laughs> allegedly because of the wardrobe drama from crown chasers so yeah the last bit of tea that we have to talk about can be found and sourced from the unlikeliest of places, Afrikaans radio station, Er is here, yes, Radio Sonnegrense itself, guys, where Natasha was being interviewed <sighs> yet again by someone who clearly doesn't know anything about pageantry. Anyway, so she talked about how she was allegedly invited back to Miss Universe. So she said that she, it's not that she's not allowed to go. So they did allow her to come back. And that is a direct translation from what she is saying in Afrikaans, okay? So that is that I can't do it. So I have a lot of time to come back. But my kids, and I can go to the super as I would Maar my kiese is my jyfra Zuid Afrika. If you don't speak Afrikaans, you're just gonna have to trust me. I spoke it for at least seven years before I learned to speak this language that I'm speaking right now. Okay, so I'm proficient in Afrikaans. I can read, write, and speak, and everything. Uh, Afrikaans is my mother language. You can tell me nothing about Afrikaans, which is why I got so pissed off. <laughs> when, <coughs> allegedly, Miss South Africa CEO said, she looked at this interview of Natasha and allegedly stated that something must have gotten lost in translation. Yes, because a lot of people obviously picked up on what Natasha was saying in this, like, oh my goodness, Miss Universe is bending rules for Natasha, you back. She could go back, but she's not going to. How holy, how noble of her. Oh my goodness, a million girls would kill for this job. And apparently Steph Veal, because there was this screenshot floating around um, an account, you know, of Miss South Africa CEO telling someone that, something got lost in translation. And let me tell you, even someone who speaks basic Afrikaans, which I know a few of you obviously watching do, uh, because you're probably South African, a lot of you, nothing got lost in translation here. She straight up lied. 
She's tra- it's a- I was rooting for this woman. I don't know why she lied. Did she think because it's Ares here, just like two people would be listening and not one of them would would know what was going on because they're probably 90 in a after it worked somewhere. I don't know why Natasha lied, but she very clearly and obviously did because Miss Universe's rules have been the same forever. No woman ever has been allowed to compete twice. Well, I shouldn't say ever, but no woman in recent history has been allowed to compete twice at Miss Universe. Probably not even in my lifetime, okay? And look at this, look at this, I'm old. So I don't know where Natasha is getting this delusion from that the Miss South Af- that the Miss Universe organization allowed her back, but this drove me crazy because you guys know, you guys know that Natasha has been the hill I have died on for Miss South Africa 2023, and I'm just so disappointed. Now, a lot of you guys have come to a defense, as one does when you like someone or love someone, a specific contestant. Of course, we want to come up and defend our favorite girlies, but I cannot come up with a defense for this. Why is she lying? This drives me crazy. This this has been just mind-blowing for me because I don't know why she would say something like that. Did she think that because it's an Afrikaans, just like, you know, the 49 of us who speak it, according to Charlize, would not notice? I don't... I just, girl, I just... Uh, Natasha, no man, don't do... Don't start your reign like this. Now, a lot of people myself included, assume that Natasha, you know, has grown to like the shine that she's gotten from the fact that, you know, she just wants to be Miss South Africa and no, she's not going to Miss Supernatural. She just wants to be Miss South Africa and serve Miss South Africa. Now, did she say this? Did she say that she declined a second opportunity to go to Miss Universe? Purely to seem more noble and saintly and even borderline like a martyr? You guys will have to tell me. You guys will have to tell me. Because I just, I can't, I can't believe that those words escaped her mouth. Knowing damn well that it's not the truth. It's, (laughs) it's not the truth. I mean, should I use the L word? It is a lie. So yes, you guys will have to tell me. I, I, I like Natasha. You guys know I like Natasha throughout her Miss South Africa run this year, but yo, yo, this one, I felt like a disappointed parent, to be honest with you. So let me know what you guys think. Guys, that is, I believe, most, if not all of the tea of Miss South Africa 2023 post-crowning. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.